Okay, this is a fairly simple project. You uh, just really print the crate, three parts there. The robot splits down the side, so there's a front and a back, and then the two arms, so very few parts there. I'm using one of the uh, TT type gear motors, the 120 to 1 for the slower gear ratio, and it just uh, bolts in. But basically, the concept for the toy is an old one. But it's based, in this case, off a toy that you can still buy right now. They've got this uh, guy right here, as you can see. Tin Toy Arcade sells this uh, wind-up toy, where you wind it up, and it does the same functions. In fact, you can find a video um, of the toy operating online, I believe. Let's see, do they give it a name or anything? Yeah, you can watch it on, on YouTube. Sam the Crate Rolling Man, but um, base the toy idea off of that, uh, and the robot itself that I decided to use, rather than spending all my time designing one, I went on to uh, Thingiverse and found that uh, J-A-V-O, Javo, did this vintage toy robot design, which is basically based off of the 1950s Robot 7 which was a wind-up robot and um, his files have some problems his main STL file has one of the feet parts touching the body so they're they're one you can't separate those but it didn't really matter because I was going to change the design of the the robot so much basically join instead of all the parts separate like he does I was going to join them all together See, that pile of parts is the way he provides the STL, and uh, <clears throat> so I split, divided all that up, joined the parts back together, split it down the side so it's just a two-part build, and uh, split up one of the legs and put it into a uh, more kicked position, as you can see here, to add just a little bit of animation to the look of the whole thing. And... As far as the build pictures go, I think I've got them here somewhere. Here's inside the crate, for example. It's the TT motor. It has two screws that bolt from the other side. Here's the switch. I'm using the standard uh, slide switch. I normally do the mounting holes are about 19 millimeters apart. And have two uh, AAA batteries powering it, and the cover will screw on to that. Now this is the side where the screws go in to hold the TT motor in place. And I did change some things. This one I printed with the face down on the board, which means this is all filled with uh, support. I didn't end up like having to remove all that support. And it also doesn't leave it as a nice finish as you want. So in the end, I took the file and removed all of that. So it's a flat surface. So when you print it, you print it flat. You do have support for the countersunk holes, but that's not a big deal. And then this plate, you would just glue on after the fact. So you can end up with a really nice, clean plate. And here we can see the robot. I think I have a picture... Here somewhere. Yeah, here's the two parts, the front and the back, which you just glue together. They just print just as you see them laying there. Doesn't matter what you print them in if you're going to paint it. And there is a, a metal rod that you do have to bend, which is going to join the box and the robot together. And ideally, you would want the rod glued into here so things can't twist. Mine right now is loose so I can take it apart. <clears throat> and just some early shots of the stuff. There's the mechanical tin toy. The rod itself... If we can get back far enough to see everything. The rod itself, um, I made mine out of a piece of old welding rod, which is basically eighth inch steel, mild steel. 
you could, which is very close to three millimeters if you're in the land of millimeters. So you could go to the hobby store and you could buy brass rod that's three or eighth inch, or maybe you've got an old fat coat hanger laying around, which you could, could epoxy into there and you run it up in the bottom of the foot and you epoxy it there. You only have to make a couple of bends to the uh, metal rod. Basically, you're gonna need you're gonna need about four four and a quarter inches before you make this first bend, and then roughly three quarters of an inch before you make the bend that then goes up inside the leg. So this comes here, bends, and then goes up. It fits in there. The arms are just screwed on. In my case, I use some uh, 632 screws. You want to make sure they're left loose so that they can move as the crate moves. And uh, like I say, when you print it the new way, the piece that you would glue on here would then hide those two screw holes also, besides looking better, since the part would print flat. Just glue that on. This side, I hold the cover on with some uh, small number two tapping screws. And uh, the switch is going to end up on one of the sides, which to start and stop it, you simply have to hold the box and jam it and then release it. Because so, otherwise, you know, it's just going to spin around. If I can get, uh, get my fingers on there. See, the whole thing turned because I'm not glued onto that shaft. So when it gets to where you want to operate the thing, you'll have to that and by angling that a little bit is how you can make the robot go in circles or walk straight but it'd still be better if you uh, epoxied or super glued or something that shaft in here and got rid of the, the twisting action so um, links below to the Thingiverse uh, let me close this out because I believe we have it here. We don't need you. There will be the Thingiverse, and the thing number is 4920875. I'll be updating the thing files. Here, you can't see it. Now you can see what I'm talking about. I'll be updating the thing files to include the demo video and the build video.